This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. The future of fantasy football is here with All22. All22 is the only fantasy platform with full 53-man rosters. You'll get to choose between personnel packages each week, and you'll be setting a depth chart, not a lineup. You'll have access to PFF grades and analytics to help you make decisions. Are you ready for an upgrade from the same old fantasy football game? Have you ever wanted to build your own team? Think you can scout like a pro? Then visit all-22.com to sign up and learn more today. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Average Savage Podcast. Our special guest today is Brandon Copeland. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers because if if you've been listening that long, but he was episode one and we're on past 200 now. So uh, pretty pretty dope uh, to get back years later. I don't know if you remember the time that when when it wasn't. Well, first of all, I was only doing audio and I was literally doing it Mm -hmm. off my phone and I had my phone up to the mic like that, like that. Like (laughs) that's how I was doing it because I didn't know what I was doing back in 2018. That's so awesome. I don't know if you recall, but I remember it. Uh, you were ju- you were just coming off your injury, and then you just mm. right after that you signed with the Jets. And I remember uh, how you were saying you were like starving, like some kind of animal. I don't remember exactly, mm. but mm. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's bringing back memories. But it's dope to see now, and it all came back into fruition. And then you you know you went on with your career and made a bunch of different teams and things like that. And um, <clears throat> yeah, which brings up retirement last year. You started with the Baltimore Ravens. You ended with the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens, your hometown team. So what was that like? Ever did you ever think that was going to be the plan? Like, yeah, man. I, it's one. It's a storybook ending to a career. Obviously, even more storybook will be going and winning the Super Bowl with the Ravens. But you know, I can't win them all. Can't win them all. But um, it, it, it definitely was a storybook ending. And and frankly, when I finished it uh, up my career, I remember in year nine just trying to go back trying to go back and one of my uh friends who's also a mentor um who's also a former player was just like yo what are you doing like you don't need to go back like what you looking for closure i remember her saying what you looking for closure none of us get closure bro like it's it's okay it's the nfl right and to go back play with my hometown team um be able to be there and actually play games because my first year i was practice squad um my grandmother has been battling with dementia she's in maryland so you know i would literally spend my off days going on walks with her type of thing you know um literally i got closure it was a storybook ending my kids got to watch me play got to sack uh mac jones who was with my old team at the time fourth quarter of the game again i can't ask for anything more and i get to walk away from the game with you know uh yeah bumps and bruises and things of that nature but uh, again I, I get to walk away so can't ask for anything more yeah no for sure I, I know i don't know i forgot the exact stat but it's like what three years or something max players last or whatnot if they make it and you know you're undrafted out of ivy league and you know you played what 10 years so yeah hey can't can't beat it right <laughs> for sure all right so now i know you got the book coming out um mm-hmm. I knew I already knew you were going to come out with a book. I just didn't know when. But <laughs> so tell me about your book, uh, your money, your money playbook. Yeah, man, we got uh, your money playbook. It is a culmination of years of hard work, man. We've been working on this. We've tested it with my students at Penn um, over the last two years. It it started out the first year, and it just wasn't right. Frankly, it was. Um, a short synopsis of what it currently is. And, and after the first time testing it with the students, I was just like, yeah, like it talks a lot. It talks a good game, but like, is anybody really walking away with some life changing stuff? You should really be able to walk away with like your game plan. And so went back in the booth, put in work to rewrite it and make it more, um, Hey, here's, here's practice. Here's the application. And, you know, what we do is we break down your money journey from zero to financial freedom and financial confidence into my favorite subject, football. So you have four quarters, you have uh, a halftime, you have an overtime, you have training camp, and literally you are walking through your maturation of starting with a plan and, and developing your why to 
investing to figuring out how to create more side hustles and, and revenue streams for yourself to the power of legacy and making sure your kids' kids are, are straight. And so, yeah, man, Your Money Playbook, go cop it now. It's www.yourmoneyplaybook.com, 247 pages of straight heat. <laughs> I know you kind of just mentioned it, but like, what what do you want someone to get out of it? And like, and uh, age wise, like, who do you think it targets? Yeah, so I think this uh, one, I want people to be able to walk away with like their game plan for their lives from a, a financial standpoint. Hey, this is my budget and this is how I'm going to be allocating my money from here on out. This is my plan when it comes to investing. I think that, you know, just even taking a step back is it gives us all the opportunity to be more intentional with our decisions. A lot of things, frankly, you can go online and find a lot of information about investing and what to put your money into and all of that type of stuff. But who uh, there's a difference between uh, me going online and looking up pass rush moves and me being coached by Kevin Green, Hall of Fame, outside linebacker, third time, all time sack leader in the NFL and him guiding me on what I need to do and where I need to move my hands to actually get my intended outcome. This is that this is the coach. This is walking you through the entire thought process to develop your own understanding for your own money story your own money journey your own money evolution so so i would say that this is your coach and you'll walk away with your real playbook a, a buddy of mine um who's with me all the time is it was like man like i was reading your book and this ain't an easy read and i was like damn uh I, damn i'm sorry like what's wrong with it he was like no 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 that's like a good thing like i i thought i was going to sit down open it up and it was just going to be some you know invest your money and this and this he was like but no i literally like I turn the TV off. I break out my notebook. I literally like am sit down locked in and I'm like taking notes while I'm reading this book. Oh, cool. That's yeah, that's what it's for. Like, I, and so the, the target audience right now is, is high school kids and above. It's high schools. Uh, I'm keep about to say athletes just because I work with athletes so much, but it's high school students, um, junior, senior year and above college students, young adults. Older adults can take this. And the reason why everyone can actually use this book is because you don't typically go through a true financial education course in your education journey. So the fact that nobody actually goes through that gives us the opportunity to be able to educate you here. But more importantly, this is also going to be one of those books that you revisit years down the line as you start to evolve. Oh, I want to buy my first house. Let me go in the this part of the book and look at this and okay, that's how I go ahead and, and make this decision. So anyway, looking forward to it, it coming out. The feedback's been incredible for those who've read it thus far. And um, we just need people to continue to tell their friends about it. Yeah, no, for sure. And are you going to make the audio book? Yeah. So we are working on the audio book right now. Um, right now, you know, business, You're doing business it? time is time. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to figure You're that out. The I don't know. I don't know. I want to be the voice, but we also are expecting our third child right now as well, too. And they're talking about, you know, three days in the booth, two to three days in the booth. And I'm like, I just I don't know if I have two to three days, brother. Um, but I, I would love to uh, simply because, that's you know, the Kevin Hart's of the world, the 50 cents of the world. You know, they've taken the time to, to do their own books. But if I if I don't get the opportunity to do so or I'm not able to carve out that time, then hopefully the the people who read it or listen to it will forgive me. Hey, at this point, someone might be able to record it and they could dub your voice on yep. Twitter somehow <laughs> at this point. <laughs> the funny thing is I don't even like my own voice. So as I think about it out loud, I'm like, I'm an audio book guy myself. And I'm like, if I did it, then I don't know if I'd listen to my own book again. You know what I'm saying? So that'd be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, I think uh I'm I'm the same. I d I don't know. I don't I think a lot of people don't like their own voice. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's go into more of your business ventures. I know uh, you're the co-owner, co-founder of um, Athletes.org. So tell us a little bit about that. And I'm still curious, like, how you guys got Athletes.org, like the domain? <laughs> yeah, as crazy as it sounds, it was it was it was out there. We had to purchase it, but um, you know, it it literally was a nominal fee for for Athletes.org. Um, the the 
the plight of college athletes right now is one that many people won't see or understand or recognize simply because, you know, when you look out on TV, you see USC play LSU, you see UGA play Clemson, and you see the big stadium, you see the the the, the lights, the um, fireworks and things of that nature, but um, you see the multi-million dollar facilities and things like that. But what people don't necessarily see or talk about is the fact that the NCAA has generated $17.5 billion in revenue in 2022 alone. The NFL was $11 billion in revenue. The NBA was closer to, uh, was below all of that, right? And, and, and college athletes now get the same thing that they got in 1985, which is a scholarship and meals and books and, you know, some equipment. And I'm not detracting from that. That is amazing. It's phenomenal. However, the, in this multi-billion dollar industry, the only group of people who do not have their own formal representation at the negotiating tables of college athletics are the athletes. You, the NCAA represents the interests of its schools. It has that on its website. It, it represents its members of the schools and the conferences. The the There's NACDA, N-A-C-D-A, which represents the athletic directors. You have AFCA, which represents the football coaches. You have NABC, which represents the basketball coaches. And you have NADA, which represents the trainers. And every time the college athletes say, hey, we deserve our own representation, everybody says, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't need representation. We got your back. Let us, let us handle it for you. You know we're going to look out for your interests, and that's not true. Uh, as we like to say, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're going to end up on the menu, and unfortunately – the reason why the NCAA and all these different schools have been sued for years to this point, the reason why the EA sports game, you know, stopped for a bunch of years and are now finally coming back is because college athletes have consistently ended up on the menu. And so what we built with athletes.org is their representation, their organization to go out and, and be at those negotiating tables alongside them, representing them so that they can be true partners in the business of college sports. If this was the NFL, of all the revenue, the NFL players make 48.5%. In the NBA, of all the revenue, the NBA players make a little over 50%. All of that has been negotiated by the Players Association. Next year, for the first time in history, college athletes will be able to be paid directly from their schools which is something that a lot of them, a lot of the schools said they would never, and you know, that would never see the light of day. The question still is like, all right, well, are the athletes actually at the table? What say do they have in how the money is negotiated? When do they get paid? What is the bonus structure? Does some of it go to their retirement account? Do they get health insurance benefits? Do they have practice limitations? What is their concussion protocol? Right. Like what are all these different things that, you know, athletes who are earning revenue and earning money, um, but college athletes in general at this level deserve to have who is, are the ones out there advocating for them? And so that's what we built with athletes.org. We have over 3000 members um, and we're a little over a year old at this point and we're just continuing to grow. I'm getting bags under my eyes every single night. So I'm out here working for y'all. I'm working for these athletes. Sheesh. How how crazy is it? Like how much stuff has changed? Like in one year, in two years, in six months? Yeah, that's why I have bags under my eyes. We literally, literally working on a statement right now. Um, you know, um, it is yeah, things change overnight with this stuff, and um, and that's one. You know, when you're building a business, building a company, that's an opportunity of a lifetime, right? It's the opportunity to be in this market and, and this day and this time is is great. Um, two, there's a tremendous need, which is also great. Um, but yeah, it, it does not make it simple and it doesn't make it for the, the faint of heart. Um, and I guess by the news changing, it also creates its own moat or barrier to entry, so to speak. Um, although, you know, I, I would like a, a, a couple weeks where, you know, things stayed the same for a little bit. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's just like, 
the social media apps and they just update out of nowhere. That's like <laughs> NIL right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, the late thing, you just double clicking into that for your audience, man. I think NIL is great. NIL is phenomenal. The way I always explain it to people is like NIL is Pat Mahomes State Farm deal. It's his subway deal. It's marketing, right? It's LeBron's Gatorade deal. It's Nike deal. It's not their checks from the Lakers and from the Chiefs, right? In a multi-billion dollar industry, you know, we would look at Pat Mahomes like he was crazy if he wasn't getting a check from the Chiefs. But because of the system that has been created, we don't we don't question why Jalen Milrow isn't getting a check from Bama or why Cam Ward isn't getting a check from Miami. And again, good thing is all that is changing, right? That will happen in fall 2025, but we we can't expect an, an organization that has never, ever been fully committed to the interests of its athletes to now be the the organization that's going to go out here and put its athletes interests above its own the term student athlete was born well I'll, I'll let me not even ruin it right if anybody is ever interested go out and look up when and why the term student athlete came to life and then you tell me whether you feel comfortable uh, using that term to refer to me or your friend or anybody else. Say say everyone starts getting paid like they're on some type of salary or stipend for the year, whatever you want to call it. And do you think it's going to happen where there's going to be players that go pro that weren't probably going to go pro before they got paid and vice versa? Players that were going to go pro before they got pro? Say it one more time. Swing like say team. so everyone's gonna get paid now, right? Yep. So say just like a regular. Oh, job. so will somebody just say like I'm not gonna go pro because I'm getting paid more here in college? Well, no, and they're just more relaxed and they're not like hungry enough to go to, you know, do an extra practice to get better and all that. But then there's gonna be lower salary players that are gonna maybe maybe they weren't even thinking about going pro and then they're like, oh, I could go pro and they're start working harder and they're already thinking about getting a nine to five or whatnot. Yeah, I think that there's going to be, um, yeah, there are going to be so many different cases and stories that come out of there. So many different what ifs. But I think that, you know, if, if you were would knock on wood, one, you know, one of the reasons why we built athletes.org was to help protect athletes with these opportunities. But if you have the ambition to go and make it to the league, you're going to go and make it to the league. Right. Like um, you like you said, some may get the money and then they're going to start to coast. You would have done that year one in the NFL as well, too, or year three, right? Like, it, 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 that's a mindset thing that's not necessarily uh, um, uh, uh, something that NIL or, or revenue sharing will be able to prevent at all. But the what I don't want people to do is because there's some folks who will say, you know, well, you know, you can't give young people all that money that fast and that early, like, now they're they're just going to blow it. Well, one, let me blow it. Then don't <laughs> if if that's what I'm going to do, let me blow it. Don't you hold it for me, and don't you take it and and spend it on your car and vacation home and your extra uh, second house and things of that nature, right? Like let me blow it then. If you if you're that afraid for me, let me learn that lesson myself. So that that be be one. But two, we also got to realize that college athletes at this point are are so much more mature than we ever were at that age. And that's a result of growing up with everybody being able to be a reporter because you got cameras all around you. So you can't make some of the mistakes that we may have made in the past because there's somebody that can pull out a camera when you have a temper tantrum, right? Um, you have college athletes now who have agents, who have representation, who have cars, who have to deal with taxes and things of that nature. And so for them, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution. And we are prepared as athletes.org, but also it's it's also an opportunity for other folks and other institutions in the world to come rally around rally around athletes and provide them with the playbook and the ecosystem to be successful as they make the money and to do their best to stay sane. But the mindset piece, if you don't have that, you weren't going to make it in the NFL anyway. I keep saying the NFL, but I know it's pro sports as well, too. Any pro sport. Like you said, average to savage, man. Average to savage. Now, that's a mindset.
that's a lifestyle. No, that was just like a rabbit hole question. Like I think about mm-hmm. random stuff like that and I like predict it in my head and I always think about like, but that's for any, I mean, it could be for literally anything. Like that could be, yep. that could just, that could be the same way where um, <clears throat> we could use live examples. Like the, I forgot the Texas quarterback's name, but you know, yeah, yeah he got, he started and Arch Manning didn't last year. So maybe Arch Manning's about to get better and ball out and who knows, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just like, Little yep. thing. You know, obviously, as you were one of those type of players where you had to mm-hmm. eat and go, do extra work and get to it. So, like, but that's just, like, yeah, me just deep thinking about random stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. No, I I, I'm, I hear you completely. It's a new era in college athletics, and it's, it's a, yeah, it's it's amazing time to be a college athlete for sure. I, I, we continue to encourage our members, but also I just encourage anybody else that's, like, that loves a college athlete that has a friend that's a college athlete or that is a college athlete to, to really sit down and, and, and I don't want to say wake up is maybe too strong of a term, but like, don't let people don't take this moment for granted right now. You have the NCAA at the table agreeing to pay $20 billion over the next 10 years to you at the table, right? Like you have leverage, you have power and what, a lot of people are hoping that you do is hoping that you're too busy and too focused on sports to even care and to even demand that you have representation in those negotiations. But in any really good, strong negotiation, we always say, Hey, call my agent, call my agent. This is a multi-billion dollar one. You deserve to have your, your players association, your agency as a group, your representation in those rooms. Yeah, for sure. All right. I got to talk about you were on the Netflix show. Um, and you were buying houses and how did how did that all come about so for us um one real estate was a, a fun evolution for me to move a little bit beyond uh traditional investing long story short my rookie year i was doing options trades and because of geopolitical tensions over in greece the whole market was down two percent after i made a big uh, investment on some Nike call options. And once that happened, it definitely humbled me and humbled my account and humbled my bank account and my net worth, especially as a rookie. And, and, um, I quickly came out of that and said, you know what, I need to invest in something I have a little more control over and real estate became that thing. Cause I could choose the carpets. I could choose the, the paint. I could choose the windows, the kitchen designs and all of that type of stuff. And so, um, so yeah, we just evolved it over time. It started with single family flips, started with auction properties and things of that nature, sight unseen, some things that, woo, woo, you know, I was nervous, 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 but um, developed a stomach and developed a muscle and, and over time continued to grow that to now we're doing multifamily properties. Um, we're about to, uh, yeah, we're doing multifamily properties, 40 units, 88 units, 66 units. Um, we're doing commercial properties now, land development as well, too, um, where, you know, Target and and Walmart are trying to bid to be on our property, which is dope to say, you know. And so, um, so yeah, we just continue with the evolution. And, and in terms of the show by my house, one, that was an incredible experience. The uh, producers of the show reached out and and were interested in considering me um and you know after multiple conversations we were able to make it happen it was tough uh because it was uh i think we shot like 14 days before training camp with the falcons year nine for me um and and the shoot was like 10 days 10 11 days or something like that and so that left me like two and a half days to get back and settle with the family and get back to training camp and all that stuff. But I mean, those days were I was, um, you know, I was up at 4 a.m. every morning. I was training in the morning. Fortunately, I have some amazing trainers um, who flew out. They split up time. So one came for the first five days. One came for the second five days. Um, I go on set, shoot. And for, you know, however long that was, 12 hours or whatever, um, will not get the that team in trouble. Um, and then after it, I go work out again because I'm a, I always used to do two or three a day workouts before training camp. So anyway, those days were beastly. That probably is where I started getting bags under my eyes. But um, it was an incredible experience and also um, was able to meet some friends that, you know, in my co-hosts 
that also, you know, read the book, endorsed the book, you know, to have Glenn Kelman, uh, CEO of Redfin, shouting it out, you know, it's absolutely incredible. And just to also be able to learn from those folks is uh, 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 an experience I don't take for granted. Yeah, that's dope. All right, so you've done all these things. It just made me curious. So like, is there something that you haven't done that you want to do yet? Like, you've done a lot of different things. Yeah. Man. You want to be in a movie? Um, I, I would like to be in a movie. Yes, I would like to be in a movie. I'd like to own a team. Um, what kind of team? I'd like to... I don't know yet. It'd be NFL or college team. On a college um, team coming soon. Yeah, coming soon. Um, Bing. um what else? I'd like to. Th- I, I would say th- those are those are the nice the business things. I, I'm at this point. I'm also trying to make sure that I I stay sane and stay balanced. I know that that sounds probably weird coming from me, uh, <laughs> frankly, but I know that you know as we continue to chase more and 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 more, the people who make the biggest sacrifice are my sons and my wife. And with our third child on the way, I think it's really, really important for me to continue to just work on my schedule and optimizing time so that we can do all the fun things together. I want to, you know, show them the world and, and go through the world alongside them. So there's a lot of places I haven't traveled to yet that I, I definitely want to do. And I would love to be able to do it with them. Yeah, definitely. Um, what, what advice would you give to uh, retired athletes in general? And then like, obviously everyone's going to retire. So like, what, what would you, what would you say? Cause I know like, that's probably like one of the hardest things for an athlete to do, no matter if you're pro one year or you're after college and you know, you played, you know, 18 years of your life. Amateur, yeah. pro, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost would be um, give yourself some time. Take some time to uh, one, if you have immediately immediate loved ones around you, to reconnect and recatch up with them. Um, you know, you 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 don't realize how much people evolve while you're out building and growing and and playing your sport that other person is also growing evolving and everything like that and a lot of times when you're in the midst of being a pro athlete you connect with each other and you support each other but you're not necessarily like really you're supporting each other's problems and putting out fires alongside each other so giving yourself a chance to sit down and connect and just be able to like hey how you doing like what's up what do you what do you like now what do you do this right i don't want to make it sound like that means pro athletes are just completely absent during their time playing, but you devote a whole lot to be able to be at the top of your game for, for so long. So I, I would say give you space to t- yourself the time to do that. The second thing would be work on a schedule and a routine that works for you. And whether that's uh, training in the mornings, training in the evenings, whatever, right? Like you got to figure that out as quick, or I suggest you figure that out as quickly as possible. Uh, one of the things that I slacked on when I was done was just training. And like I was done, I was like, I don't have to go into the weight room. Then nobody can find me. I'm good. I'm just going now do what they all said, take this whole mindset of football and now apply it to business. And I'm going to go, 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 go. And you realize that like the training, the sweating, the exhausting your body and all of that type of stuff, that also works out a lot of stress <laughs> and mental anguish that now you know, you can be able to go into your meetings with a, a cooler and calmer head because you've already worked out a lot of those those uh, those demons, so to speak. And so anyway, I, I would say start there and and um, and those things will be key in, you know, the, the next potential chapter of your life. Um, the, the one final thing actually I would say start there, but the one final thing I'd say as I'm thinking about it as well too is is also sit down and like really be intentional with what you want your life to look like. We talk about that in your money playbook as well, for, and that's just for anybody, whether you're retiring or you're just figuring out what you want to be doing two years from now. I think that you can quickly, quickly, quickly become a hamster on a hamster wheel that's just hustling, that's just grinding, that's just making money when if you took some time to say, you know what, I I like this, but I don't like this. And I like doing this, but I don't really like this part of the job. 
you can really actually like map out your dream job, your dream career, your dream life. And a lot of us never actually get the space or time to do that. And so I would also suggest that to anybody that's on the verge of retirement. Yeah, no, that was great advice. And uh, yeah, I think a schedule is key for anybody, uh, even yeah. like out of college. Like I didn't really, I never wrote stuff down in my calendar, but like, yeah, <laughs> now I live by my calendar. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like yeah. stupid and crazy now, but like, yeah, that's how I, Absolutely. stuff happens. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to keep you long. I know we could talk for hours, but I uh, appreciate you coming on and uh, can you let the listeners know where to follow you and where to buy the book at? Yeah. If, if you want to buy the book, go to www.yourmoneyplaybook.com. You can follow me, Brandon Copeland at bcope51, B-C-O-P-E-5-1. Um, and if you want to learn anything more about me, go to brandoncopeland.com. But Man, I appreciate you, PG. It is pretty crazy to go from, you know, episode one to where we are today and the conversations and the, the amount of impact that you had, not only on my life, but on others' lives as well, too. I appreciate you, brother, and I uh, wish you nothing but continued success, man. No, I appreciate that. I'm going to have to make, like, a clip of, like, young young <laughs> Brandon and then yeah. now Brandon and see. Uh, I, think, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure I asked everyone uh, what your advice would be, so kind of, like, your advice back then Ooh. and then your voice now it'd be interesting. I'd, I'd like to see that actually i'd like to see that so all right well there's another great one and uh we'll talk soon sounds good appreciate you brother